Are you open-minded? If you said yes, then I'll test that. If you said no, that makes my job a lot harder. But I picked a topic that will test your open-mindedness about a certain topic that's a phenomenon in, on the internet right now. But if you said no, the thing is, you, we're all open-minded on a basic level. We all like to accept new things into our lives. Sometimes we may feel like we're not open-minded, but truthfully, if you've uh, been introduced to something and you start enjoying it, you are open-minded because you accepted it. Now, I don't know if this works. No. Oops. <laughs> anyway, um, I picked a topic, and I want you to be ready. And instantly I lost everybody. But I want you to keep an open mind because this actually is kind of important to being open-minded. And you may think, why is this important to being open-minded? Well, the show is about love and tolerance, which is a different form of open-mindedness. Love and tolerance is basically being able to understand the person that you don't like, and then you are able to understand and like them. So, let me continue. Now, I want this to represent the tree of diversity. This is the core of diversity. And all the branches are different opinions of diversity. And My Little Pony is just one of those branches. And my main point of this presentation is to open up your mind and make you help me trim this tree into a healthy tree of harmony. Now, that may seem a bit cheesy and dumb, but actually it's very important in our society because diversity creates conflicts. Conflicts are bad. Now, the reason why we don't chop down the tree is because diversity is good in some ways. Without different opinions, we don't get things done. Now, let's continue. Now, I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you what the origins of the brony, the person who likes the pony, who's a bro. So, let's continue. It started on 4chan. If any of you know 4chan, it's kind of infamous for, well, pornographic sense. That's basically why it's infamous. But, it's also home for a lot of forum discussions, for a lot of topics, really in TV shows, politics, anything that you can imagine that is on 4chan. Now, this is a graph that represents uh, when it started in October 2010, right here. Started with a couple posts each day, and these posts were created by critics who hated the show, and they thought it was dumb, girly, kiddish, and all those types of things. Now, the thing is, those critics actually became the backbone of this brony community. They became the fans of the show. And that proves that even though that they were the ones who hated it at the beginning, they were the ones who actually became the first to actually like it. So it showed that they were open-minded and they could accept that the show was good. And most of you are probably that right now, and that's what I'm trying to do is convince you to give the show a chance, and that shows that you are open-minded and it exploded into 6,000 posts each day. That's how big it got, and attracted hundreds and hundreds of people to that site. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is that we all watch these kids, uh, shows as a kid. If not, well, I'm sure you've at least heard of these shows. Powerpuff Girls, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Kids, kids Next Door, and The Iron Giant, the movie. Now, these are all shows that I enjoyed as a kid, and a lot of kids in my generation enjoyed as a kid. Because these kids, these, we grew up with this stuff. This was our imagination, our escape from reality, our things that we were looking forward to when we got home from school. Now, the reason why I brought these up is because they're all related, because they were all made by this woman, Lauren Faust, and she is the lead writer of My Little Pony. She's the one who created the new generation, which there is four generations, but I won't go into it. But anyway, um, that's her as a pony. She came onto the hub, which is the network that plays My Little Pony, and she wanted to make her own show. That's the dolls that she told, and that's the show. Um, but the hub denied it because uh, they didn't feel like it was a good show. And they, but they gave her My Little Pony and said, "What can you do with this?" And then they had no idea what they were in store for. It was going to be the second best children's show for an unexpected audience. Now, okay, the right, reason why this is important, again, is I'm breaking the wall and I'm trying to make you accept this new reality of people who like it, like me, and, well, some other people that I won't, Elliot. Anyway, um, 
I'm trying to break that wall for you so that you can actually see this reality. Now, most of you would, are right now very skeptic. Right now I'm probably losing your attention as we speak, but I hope that I can grab your attention in the next few minutes. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you the truth of this phenomenon on the internet, which is very interesting and I hope that you guys can comprehend, or like not comprehend, understand why they like it. Now that's a really hard thing to do, especially with all the pink that you saw in that picture. Now, the viewers, especially if they're my age or older and they're male, you probably have these pictures in your mind. Very easy to get that mixed, mixed up. Now, the thing is, you've got to be able to push back these lies and make room for the truth. Now, the real viewer, this, was, this statistic was taken at BronyCon, which is a Comic-Con but for bronies. And this, there's no better place that you can take a statistic of the viewers than the place that they all meet up, the true fans of the show. So, without further ado, the fans are, majority are in their 20s. A majority being well-educated, being in college, because they are 20, so usually that they are in college. And then a majority being heterosexual, meaning straight. And, well, homosexuality is just like, it's a persuasive presentation that is left unneeded in this. But that's just a stereotypical thought. If they are, if they watch a show that's intended for little girls, they are homosexual. But actually, that's not the fact. They are all, almost all heterosexual. Now, okay, what's the appeal of a show that's intended for uh, a show that's intended for an advertisement for this toy, and also intended for little girls? Now, the thing is, you must crush these thoughts and you must make room for, again, the truth. Now, the truth is, the show it consists of characters that are so in depth with its thoughts and their traits, things that we can all relate to on a basic level. So, let me go through these basic traits. First one being loyalty. Second one being honesty. Third, well, this actually represents two. There's two traits of this picture. There's generosity, and then there's kindness. Last trait being laughter. Now, all these traits, if not one you possess, all of them you possess. Because we all show signs of these traits all the time throughout your day-to-day -day lives. And that's why the show can be so relatable. Now, that's why you should consider. Now, these are the six main characters. Now. This is probably where I lost you again. Now, these are the six main characters, and they all possess a trait, and they all represent this trait, and they all uh, can be really relatable to people that you meet in real life. Now, I won't go too in-depth with them, because basically, just reading the traits that uh, are above them, that basically just gives you a sense of who they are. Now, the thing is, what makes the brain tick when you see a show that's intended for little girls about ponies in a magical world? Well, the fact is, all these characters here are all relatable in some sort of way, and also all these characters have a story. Actually, some of these characters aren't even in the show sometimes. They're, some of these characters are only for a show in the show for five seconds, and then the fan community gives them a story. That's why the fan community is so great, is because they're all artists, they're all singers, they're all uh, story writers, they're all artists in their own way, and that's what gives this show so much um, love, because they all possess some creativity and inspiration that comes from the show that gives them the inspiration to do what they love. Now, also another reason is because this show usually always relates, if you get to the core root of this show, it's usually just harsh situations that the characters must find a moral and just reason to deal with it. And that's the core of the show. And all of us feel like that days. Like, we all feel like we all have to come up with solutions to solve our day-to-day -day problems. Like, how am I going to get done with this test today if I haven't even studied once for it? That's kind of just like, in some way, that's just the gist of the show. Solving problems and coming up with lessons of friendship. It's cheesy. I know. Okay, and now another reason is because of magic. Now, I don't really like magic, it's because I love science. But the reason why I can like a show about magic is because, in their reality, science is replaced by magic. And that's the way that they get around it. If there is, most shows, if they deal with magic, science is involved in some sort of way. And that's how you can nitpick. That's how you can nitpick at 
Well, this isn't possible because science dictates that. That's the thing I like to show. They they got rid of uh, science. They just uprope. Uh, they just did magic and only magic with the show. And that's why you can really um, not really uh, criticize it so much. Now, another reason is because you may think that this is a perfect world, and that's what makes me sometimes put off by a lot of kids' shows, is because I don't like perfect worlds, because it's not true. Nowhere's perfect. I don't care. I lived in Hawaii. It's not perfect. There are some things. It's too hot. I get sweaty. It's not perfect in any way. Now, I'll get rid of that. That's not true. In this world, you may think it's perfect, but there are a lot of creatures that do want to seek and destroy a harmony, friendship, whatever. They do want to um, cause dismise and uh, chaos. And that makes them a perfect world. And that's why this show can be relatable at times. It's because we all have that bully in our life or that guy that just sits across the room and just looks at you and you're like, what, what are you looking at? That's the enemy of the show. That's, uh, that's usually what it always go comes down to. And now, an one enemy that in particular that I love, is his name is Discord. Discord is the embodiment of disharmony, chaos, and usually using mind games to usually throw the uh, characters out of loop. Makes them into their opposites. And if you see your opposite, like if you're kind, sweet, and gentle, and you see this mean, horrible person that likes to take advantage of others, that makes you want to be kind, sweet, and gentle. Because seeing that person push someone over, you're like, you go over that person and you help them up because you want to be that sweet, kind person. Now, the reason why this character is so um, good is because it's voiced by John Delancey, and aka Q from Star Trek, if you've ever seen Star Trek The Next Generation. And the characters are just the like. They both have powers, they both like to manipulate, they use mind games, all the same. Now, I'm wrapping up my presentation now, and um, I want to end with the fact that um, the Brony community, it's still growing, and it's never going to stop growing. It's because of the fact of like how kind and accepting the community is. If you join, you're not going to be criticized for who you are. If you're dumb, they're going to accept you. If you're too smart and you're a bookworm, they're going to accept you. If you are, you know, if you're different in any way, they will accept you. So that's the reason why the community is so great and so uh, lovable in so many ways. So I hope that you can either accept this community and I hope that you can give the show a chance. Like, because if you're sw uh, switching to the channel tonight and you see a show like this one, or even if you see the show that I'm talking about, I hope that you come up with a second chance to come back and give it a reason why you want to watch it, because then you are truthful, truthfully open-minded. And if, if you can't really accept this community, I, I'm afraid they're not going anywhere, so you're going to have to deal with it. And that's the end of my presentation.